Hello everyone! In this video, we're going to take a look at the new version of Microsoft Edge based on the Chromium open source project by Google. At first glance, Microsoft Edge shares many of the same design elements found in Google Chrome, but the company has been adding its own design changes and features for a product that looks a lot like the legacy version, but it works just like Chrome. If you want to switch to the new browser, you can download the installer from this Microsoft website and the browser is currently available for Windows 10, Windows 7, Windows 8, and Mac OS. Also soon, it is going to be a version for Linux. After installing the new version of Microsoft Edge, you will need to go through the setup process that allows you to quickly customize the new tab page. As you can see, we have three options. We got inspirational, informational, that adds news to the new tab, and the focus option removes everything and it just uses a search box and you will see your most frequent sites on this page. But the inspirational option is likely to be the best experience for most people. Also during the setup process, you can customize settings for sync. If you already sign in into Windows 10 with a Microsoft account, we'll pull in that information and it will try to log you in. And if you want to change the sync settings, you can click this option that would allow you to choose the settings that you want to sync across devices. If you don't want to sync your data, you can just disable the option. Also through the setup process, you can allow or deny Microsoft to get some of your information to improve advertising, search, news, and other Microsoft services. Also, if the browser detects that you had other browsers such as Chrome or Firefox, it will prompt you to import settings such as bookmarks, history, and passwords. Once everything has been configured, if you have been using the legacy version of Edge or Chrome, the experience will feel really familiar, which means that there isn't a significant learning curve to understand this new browser. Oh, and if you look for the old version, don't bother, because the installation will replace the legacy version of Edge. Well, technically, it will disable it, but if you remove the new version of Edge, the old version will return to Windows 10. Although the new version of Microsoft Edge is based on the Chromium engine, it still has the look and feel as a traditional version that originally shipped with Windows 10. And the way you open and close tabs and open settings and things like that, it still looks the same, but without some other features such as set tab aside, which is no longer present in this release. But you're also getting a new profile button that allows you to manage settings to switch profiles because now you can create profiles for anyone who will be using the browser on your computer without the need to create an additional Windows 10 account, which I think is pretty cool because not only allows you to have other people to use the browser without messing around with your settings, but it also allows you to create different profiles to separate content. For example, if you have a, a Microsoft account and settings and websites that you use for work, you can create an account for that. And you can also create a profile for your personal stuff and, and everything will be kept separate. Now, when you open the browser settings page, that's when things start looking a little, a little bit different. In this new version, the settings experience is similar to the Chrome experience. Instead of a flyout menu, the settings are laid out on a page with the left pane navigation system. And there is also a search box that allows you to quickly find settings. In the profiles page, that's where you can manage your account settings. And the settings will depend upon if you're using a Microsoft account or a local account. If you're logged in with a Microsoft account, you will have access to the sync settings that enables you to control sync for favorites, settings, addresses, and passwords. But as you can see, at the time of this video, history, open tabs, extensions, and collections, with, which is another feature coming to, to the browser, are not yet available. You can also, from this page, enable or disable sync. If you don't want to use the sync option, you can just turn it off, or you can turn it back on. And once you do that, you have to confirm that you want to turn it on. And that's how the browser will connect with your Microsoft account to sync your settings. Also, from this page, you can view your saved passwords 
and you can also enable or disable the options to allow the browser to offer to save passwords on sites and even sign you in automatically. In addition from this section, that's where you will go to import browser data that comes from another browser. So at the time of this video, you can import settings from Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox, and you can even import favorites from an HTML file. If you have Google Chrome installed, you can also import only the settings from a specific profile and not just from the entire installation. In the privacy and services page, that's where you can control tracking prevention, which is a new feature designed to block third-party online trackers from using cookies and other features to collect information about you and target you with advertisement and a personalized experience. Tracking prevention comes enabled by default, but you can enable or disable it using this option right here. And as you can see, you have three options that you can choose. The balance is recommended, and, but you can also use the basic option that, is, that allows most trackers to collect information about you, but it will still block harmful trackers. And you will still see some personal ads, but size will work best. Balance, as I said before, is the recommended option and it will block most of the uh, third-party trackers you will see less targeted ads and a less personal experience. And of course, it will block harmful trackers that are trying to collect information about you. You can also use a strict option, but it's not recommended because it will block a tons of stuff and it will actually break most of the sites. If you ever need to clear browsing data, such as cookies and cached images and websites, you can also do it from from this page by clicking the uh, choose what to clear option. And here you can choose the time range that you want to clear the data and then just select the options that you want to clear, which we have a, a bunch of choices such as cookies and other site data, cache images and files, which are pretty much the ones you really want to delete if something is not working right on the uh, on a certain website and you need to clear that data so it loads properly and also site permissions if you want to reset those settings and hosted app data once you decide what you want to clear just click the clear button and that will clear all that temporary data and sites should work again and but you may still need to sign in back into some of the services because deleting the cookies will reset the login information so you will have to log back in into certain websites also microsoft edge comes with bing as the default search engine for the address bar so if you don't like that experience and you need if you want to use a different search engine such as from google or DuckDuckGo or, or services like that, you can come to the privacy and settings page and at the bottom of the page, you want to access the address bar option. And here you can change the search to anything you want. You can even create your own. It does something that, that you need to do. In the appearance page, you can customize some of the visual elements of the browser. For example, you can turn on and off the dark theme. You can show your favorite bar at the bottom of the address bar, or you can choose never to, to show it or only to show it in new tabs. And you can also show or hide the home button on the address bar as well, as you can see right here. If you want to start on a certain page when showing the home button, you can set it up right here. And finally, from this page, you can also customize some of the uh, font settings. For example, the font size, you can change it to the different levels and you can also customize the font. So from here, you can set also your font size, the minimum font size and some other standards. On the startup page is a page that allows you to decide what happens when you start the web browser. 
uh, for example, you can you can set it to open into a new tab to continue where, where it's left off, or you can always specify a specific page or set of tabs that you want to open on a startup. In my case, it's just like to have a new tab open every time I launch the app. On the uh, new tab page, you won't find a lot of setting, just a customized button that will take you to a new page and it will open the uh, page layout menu where you can switch between the different layouts or you can use a custom option to set the options that you want to see on this page. I just like simplicity, so I only like the uh, background and the search box on my new tab. In the site permissions page, that's where you can control permissions that websites are allowed to access on your device, such as microphone, location, cookies, Adobe Flash, camera, and others. So you can also click each of the uh, permissions and you have different settings that you can configure. Uh, for example, uh, for cookies and site data, you can allow sites to read and save cookies. And also you can choose to clear the cookies and site data when you close the application. And as you can see at the bottom of the page, you will also see a list of the sites that have been blocked to use cookies or which sites you want to clear the information when you close the browser or they're allowed to save and read cookie data on your device. If you want to see all the cookies that are currently saved on your device, you can click this option and that will take you to all the cookies stored on your computer. You can always see more information or click the trash button to delete it or you can delete them all. If you want to find a specific cookie, you can search it right here at the top and just do a search and you will find the, uh, the cookie you might want to revise and delete. And each of the uh, permissions will have different settings that you can configure. There is also an ad option, but it's not meant to block all the ads, only those ads that are intrusive or misleading ads. In downloads, that's where you can change the location to save files and you can decide whether the browser should ask you where to save the file before downloading. On the uh, languages page, that's where you can add and remove languages if you use the browser in multiple languages. If you need to add a new, a new package, just click the add languages button and do a search for the language that you want to install. And then just click the add button and that will be added to, to the browser. Also, you have an option to allow Microsoft Edge to offer to translate a page if it is not in a language that you read. And you can also control check spelling feature and the different language that you can use. At the bottom of the page, you also get an add and remove words option that allows you to create a list of words that you don't want the Chromium Edge to, to correct while you're typing. Printers doesn't have any option, just a link to open the print settings on Windows 10. System, that's where you can enable or disable whether Microsoft Edge will continue running in the background if you close the application and you can enable or disable hardware acceleration. And sometimes this option is good to disable it. If you're having issues loading images or a video that is not running correctly, it might be the hardware acceleration that is not working as expected, so you can restart and test the settings and then come back and restart it to see if that fixes the problem. There is also an option to configure proxy, but that will take you to, to the settings up to configure the uh, proxy settings. Also, there is a reset page that only includes one option that allows you to reset the settings for the browser. This option will help you a lot of times when things are not working correctly and doing this, it might help to resolve that issue. And finally, as like with any software, there is an about page that tells you the version that you're currently running. And when you actually jump into this page, the browser will automatically check for updates. And if there is a new version available, it will download and install automatically. And then you will have to click the restart button to start with the new version. And that's basically all the settings that are available with the Microsoft Edge based on the Chromium engine at this time. Another feature that comes built into Microsoft Edge is extensions, which you can access by opening the main settings and then going to extensions. 
from here you can click the get extension from the microsoft store and then you can just click any of the extensions that are available and then just click the get button and that will install that extension on the web browser but because this browser is based on the Chromium engine it also means that you can actually now install and use extensions available for Chrome so in order to do that you just need to enable the allowed extension from another stores and that would allow you to go to the Chrome web store and just select any of the extensions available and then just click add to chrome but it would actually install it on microsoft edge if you don't have this option enabled when you come to any of the extensions available for chrome you will see this option right here so you just click this button and now once again you you will see the option to install it on the web browser and just like that now we have two extensions from different sources if you want to disable it or remove it you have to come back to the extension settings and from here you can disable each of the extensions and you can also remove it if that's something that you want perhaps one of the biggest features that comes built into the new microsoft edge is progressive web apps which makes possible to install a website as a native app on Windows 10, enabling additional features such as push notifications, background data, offline support, and more. But all these features will depend upon the developer to implement them on their services. So if you want to install a website as an app, I'm just going to show you, like if we open Office Online, more specifically Word, you can just click the main menu and then go to apps and you will see an option to install this site as an app. Once you do that, you just click the install button and now that will install on your computer and you will be able to find it on the start menu and also it will be available in the apps and features section. So you can actually uninstall it from here. So, and that's how you install or remove progressive web apps on Microsoft Edge. In addition to all these features, you also get some of the features that were available on the legacy version of Microsoft Edge. For example, you also get Reading View. Now it's just called Immersive Reader. Just click the button and that it will turn the web page in a clutter-free experience that it looks more like an ebook and it removes everything that it might cause distractions. You can also use the read aloud button to have the browser read aloud the text on the page that you're viewing. And you can also change the text preferences. For example, the background and the text size. Of course, just like the legacy version of Microsoft Edge, you can use the browser read PDF files and you can also modify it and fill out forms online and you have a few options but this experience is still of development so there's there is not a lot of features like they used to be on the legacy version for example like right now if you want to use the drawing feature there's only one color you can choose from and there is no a table of content that you can use to browse a pdf file but it includes all the basic features to manage and read pdf documents and forms. As performance goes, because this new browser uses the Chromium engine, websites are more compatible and they look fast. As a result, the performance is great. Also, the feature set that we see today, it's good, but it still needs work. So we're going to have to wait and see how new updates bring more features and improvements to the web browser. Remember to let the video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And I just hope this video was informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing.